Hey everybody, Anthony here, FSU Off-Road. Welcome back to another video. It's a nice, cold, brisk day, and we're working on the race jeep. Today, and in this video, it's time to start getting this thing wired up. That way we can make some noise. Let's get to it. Now, over the past few days, um, I haven't been recording, but I've been just slamming parts on this chassis. And in the last video, we finished our LS1 rebuild and got it installed in the chassis. Well, now I've got our rotating assembly, intake, everything is already installed. The only thing that I don't have for the LS1 is a starter. With that being said, I went ahead and threw in uh, the steering components torqued them down the spec minus the arms here um, just started just putting stuff on here cool packs exhaust headers and everything back here is all torqued to spec and installed completely I also installed our batteries fuel lines and power that way I can get those supplied to the engine as well that way we can once we get this all wired up we can make some noise so went ahead and um, ran it from the back for the fuel cell and uh, made sure everything was nice and clean. Although we don't have the interior in here, we at least have power running to our switches and our panel that we built earlier, got it mounted up. And now this is where all of our electronics are gonna be held underneath, inside the dash, we'll keep it watertight. As you see here, this is gonna be everything that we need to completely wire the full chassis. So this is our switch probe. We went with the RCR um, 12 panel. Um, uh, 12 panel switch panels and I rent with this because it has a higher amperage output on some switches um, which is the reason why we went with that and it's literally all controlled here so you can kind of get away with all relays and everything like that which is super nice now for engine management we went with the Holly Terminator X because we're running a turbo 400 we don't need you know the max or anything like that and it's it's pretty basic this whole wiring harness is literally plug and play, which is the reason why I went ahead and got the motor installed with everything on it. That way I have points of reference to plug in all the connectors, which is um, what we have to do next. But this is going to be everything that we're going to be using to get this race Jeep alive and running. So what I'm going to focus on now is I'm going to focus on figuring out this Holly system and literally go through the booklet. It's plug and play with all the sensors that are already there and they tell you which ones to start with and how to route it and everything like that. So it should be really easy and really basic. Now we all know how that goes whenever you think something's going to be easy but we'll see. Since this is a, not your standard car, truck, LS swap, um, I have to just kind of, I just kind of dangled the wires around. Um, but everything does line up, so what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to actually fish some of this stuff better and route it better to where it'll actually fit a little bit better. Like our fuel pressure is like up here, but I really need it to be back there on the regulator, things like that. So I will have to do some changing of this harness, but literally in like five minutes, reading the instructions, it's literally plug and play. It tells you exactly what to do, running the battery directly to your main power switch, which leads me to my next point. I have to figure out where I'm going to get everything mounted on this dash. That way I can actually get this stuff ran, get a zip tied down. That way it's not going to go anywhere, be nice and secure versus just flopping around like it is. Also, I have to get a couple more sensors, but all in all, it really is plug and play like everybody says. Well, I've been spending the last few hours here cleaning up the engine bay and went ahead and kind of ran all of our wires got it all cleaned up where it needs to be everything is zip tied down back of the cylinder heads are grounded and everything is run up to the dash now i kind of started putting piecing the dash together that way i can kind of see how things are going to run up through the back of the dash from the firewall and how they're going to be laid out up here and i also went ahead and put our face plates on the front of the dash as well that way I can kind of see how everything is going to integrate 
from the backside. It's been a couple of days since I've been working on this. Um, I have been working on it. I've just been basically tidying up everything, getting everything nice and secure as far as the wiring goes, getting things installed. Let me show you how it's transformed over the past few days. So we'll start back here in the batteries area. Went ahead and got our battery terminal post and everything. This is for the Holly um, ECU system and got everything ready to just actually just plug it in. Kindly ran underneath, went ahead and put our dash in here with the center console, uh, with our shifters. That way everything is run the way it's gonna be up to the kill switch. And then from there, obviously we got the Holly and everything already done on the engine here, but man, we got a lot of wires. And basically went ahead and got everything installed as far as the ECU goes in our switch pros. And this is what I want to talk about today more in detail because this thing is going to make wiring this whole chassis super easy. Now switch pros offers two um, they offer two different styles of PCM um, power control modules. Um, an eight button switch that has you know eight buttons and a certain amount of outputs. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we went with the, the RCR, the Racer 12, which has 12 buttons, 17 outputs. But the main reason why we went with the 12 is because this switch, PCM, also has high amperage outputs which the 9100 series does not and with that being said we're able to control ignition starter solenoids fans everything that we would need and more one thing about this it has an app androids iphones that you can control all these buttons you can make them on off it's completely programmable whatever you want to do they pretty much have it already installed and this is the reason why we're going this route. This system has five wires here that are really important. This white wire is for a light, so it's a dimmer light that can dim the, the backlighting of the switch. Not super important, but it's kind of cool for, for nighttime. This blue wire is super important because we're gonna be plugging this into our ignition switch or the button that we choose for the ignition. And this is going to allow us to program the buttons to either be used with the ignition on or off so if your ignition's on you can use it if your ignition is not on those buttons will not turn on but it's also programmable to use it directly from the battery which is also a really cool source so without the ignition on you can maybe um, preset the dome lights to turn on from the battery and vice versa now these other three wires here these are pink wires these pink wires are also known as their trigger wires now like I said there's four outputs that are higher outputs. Now these four outputs right here directly are 35 amp. Now there's also two of these 15 amp wires, which is these smaller output wires here. You can link two of these together for a 30 amp circuit as well. So those are your five higher outputs. And then there's 11 additional just um, standard outputs that you can use for this. And literally the only other, minus the 150 amp mega fuse that's uh, a linkable fuse which we have going to the kill switch so no matter what um, per ultra four rules if we kill that it's going to kill this this uh, pcm um, and then which will in turn kill the ignition to the motor um, there's only one ground wire that you have to run to get this all buttoned up and powered up so it's kind of nice super simple super easy to install now one of the greatest things about this is it eliminates all fuses and all relays and you know relays require four sometimes five wires to get one relay installed for a light this doesn't do that it's all controlled within this panel right here and as long as you can keep it um, they recommend mounting it upright that way water doesn't seep in the seals although they are sealed um, for water they still don't want it just sitting on there that way it can seep in and corrode those materials. I did put some dielectric grease on all the fittings, but got it installed there. And then, um, yeah. So I have to situate what wires I'm going to be running where. That way I can finish up installing these Holly wires as well, kind of get it all integrated. And literally, this is going to be the only 
electrical portion of this whole chassis is going to be all sit within this PCM and ECU right here. I'm not an electrician by no means, but by doing this, this allows me the opportunity to wire something up, look very professional while doing it, and keep it simple uh, because, you know, you know the saying, keep it simple, stupid, and uh, hopefully it'll eliminate any electrical hiccups. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you have a good ground on all your outputs. And aside from that, that's it. I mean, this thing is completely programmable. It's completely um, unique to the industry. It's super small, super compact. Um, even and I didn't do none of it. Even a caveman can do it. I didn't. <laughs> Now you can kind of see what we went with with our ignition that'll just be an on and off and then i'm not going to be able to run the starter or the fuel pumps unless the ignition's on with our ignition wire so once the ignition's on i'll be able to start it which this will be a momentary switch and then obviously we can turn on fuel one or fuel tool fuel one fuel two or i can also program these that if this one's on this one can't be on if this one's on this one can't be on and i can also program these to be memorable or memory based whenever the ignition is turned on so that'll be kind of cool once we hit the ignition fuel one will just automatically cut on then we can hit the start we won't have to continually press fuel one or fuel two fuel two now the dome light i'm going to run that one directly off the battery not the ignition and then the chase light i'm going to have it programmed as a memory as well off the ignition and i'm going to run it to be a strobe pattern now, only only reason why I put the chase light on here is because whenever we're just wheeling or anything like that, I don't want the chase light to be on. So I'm going to put it on this programmable switch here. I'll have it for strobe for whenever we're racing and momentary or memory to whenever the ignition is turned on. And then obviously whenever we're just driving it around or just whatever, I can turn it off. Rock lights, I'll have it on ignition or maybe just run it off battery just in case because it is a, so, uh, a low amperage thing. Headlights, I'm gonna do a double tap. Headlights will be for the, the KC lights that we have up front and then I'm gonna double tap it for those to remain on and then add the secondary A-pillar lights for whenever it's completely dark. Now this fan right here is kind of like the override that I was kind of talking about. I'll program it to ground out our additional relays that I want to install. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but that is kind of the idea. I don't know what I'm going to do there. This pumper, I'm going to be running it as a variable speed because our pumper is the Mac 1 from Rugged Radios. Obviously, instead of using the dial, I can just hold this in and let it charge up or charge down depending on what we want. Most of the time, anybody runs a pumper, they just run it full blast. And then obviously, we can control our radios here obviously you can dial it up and turn it on every time but if you just get it set to where you want it then you can just use the on off switch there kind of makes it a little bit nicer and that can be programmed to run whenever uh, you just want it off the battery or not it just depends on what you want to do with that still got to figure out some stuff with this and then obviously we'll have some trigger wires for our button on the steering wheel for our horn and some other things but yeah kind of the, the mindset behind it all and um, with that being said we can start labeling our wires and then using those outputs um, for what we want them for and then we can make note of those outputs and then once we go in get power powered up to all this stuff we can go in the app change all this stuff to, to however we want to program it that way we can have the ignition on and off and momentary switches for the starter and things like that and the cool thing about this is is it does have a lockout pad so you can do a code whatever you want the code to actually lock this out that way people random people off the street can't come over here and turn your ignition on and, and try to to crank it up that's kind of cool that's a really cool feature also with this if I, as long as i have the kill switch on I can start this thing remotely from my phone across the across the way. So that, that's pretty cool too. A lot of people use that for maybe like k and side by side Jeeps if they want to, you know, if they're camping and they want to turn on some lights, um, they can do it remotely with their phone, walk up the way the lights are already on instead of having to bring a flashlight, kind of fumble through. So really cool features on this. Not trying to sell it by no means. Um, you know, I paid the same price everybody else is going to pay for this. Um, this is just something that like I said I'm not an electrician so I think that this is going to be um, an ultimate way to wire this chassis with relative ease um, and and not have to 
you know, stumble and fumble over wire gauges and sizes and relays and fuse panels and boxes. And then once you get that all installed, you got to figure out where you're going to put it. And I don't, it, it blows my mind of, of electricians that can do that, not me. Uh, I can't do that. So I'm just using this to be the simplest way possible. I don't know if it's cold where you're at, but it is freezing here and the wind is absolutely insane, which makes it super hard to work on the chassis and wiring and everything. Uh, my saving grace is a little torch that I use to, you know, solder all the wires and everything with. Um, but anyways, coming in here, I've been back and forth a couple different times and all these wires that are going over here are actually going to lights, trigger wires, um, the bigger amperage ones are going to go to the fans. I've kind of changed my mind on a few things uh, going back and forth with this stuff, but all this stuff is over here. Now, the ones that are going the opposite way, uh, we have a low amperage for our ignition switches. Uh, we got fuel pumps, starter solenoid, uh, grounds, and then finished up, grounding the heads, grounding the uh, the motor got our starter all that stuff installed and um, while doing that all wired up and everything is grounded and it looks like i got in a fight with some zip ties but i think i won regardless everything is nice and buttoned up and secured um a lot of this stuff is just hanging here for right now i mean i'll get a lot of this cleaned up there's gonna be more wires that are gonna be running to the back once we get um, closer to time but everything is ran where it needs to go everything's run to the kill switch um, went ahead and started you know just button up a few more things on the motor here We've got our plug wires and things like that in um, torqued all the bolts and everything to spec the only thing that that is not completed um, is our intake temp sensor which I'm gonna have to build like a little aluminum piece to stick it there and I'll just put uh, I think this is a 318 PT, so I'll just um, tap that on a little cap here and I'll just center it right there to make it easy and accessible and, and, the, and the actual plug is just right here, but I'll use that. I'll get that plugged up whenever we start cranking on the motor or whatever we gotta do. Now, the one thing, I did make a list of the stuff that we need to take care of here and you see most of it is knocked out. The last couple things we gotta do is fluids, AKA oil in the motor and fuel. Now, the last thing that we gotta do here is go ahead and get our battery terminals on the battery, get our kill switch turned on. And what's gonna come on is hopefully this holly dash is gonna pop on and we'll be able to also program our switches here on our switch pros okay i'm up here in the chassis now and as you see behind me went ahead and got the batteries hooked up and they're just snug down for now um now i guess it's the moment of truth I kind of verified and went through everything here and made sure all the grounds and everything were nice and snug and tight on the chassis and all the wires were connected to where they need to be so we should be good. So I guess we'll see what happens whenever we turn the kill switch to on position. Hey, 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 there we go. So with this being on and off, now that it's blinked, um, it should be an on off switch altogether. And we'll probably have to go in and program it. in our app. And looks like we're gonna have to do, this is my first time seeing it, so I, I don't know anything about it, but I guess we'll have to try to connect to it 
if it'll happen and maybe do yeah portrait sounds good scan for local devices oh look at there as you see it has bluetooth synced up and there's our switches I guess it's set for them to be set like this but just like that now we can go in here and program configure all of our switches do the backlighting name what switches are going to be it's hard for you guys to see it but we can do all these things and uh, it's probably gonna take a little bit of time to do this but once we get this control panel um, figured out what's going to happen is, is next time we hit the ignition switch it's going to be on and off because right now they're all programmed for an ignition switch and the ignition switch um, is uh, needs to turn on from the battery so that's something that we do have to configure in here once I configure that and I turn the ignition switch on then the holly is going to come on um, because that is triggered from an ignition source so a lot of confusion there uh, I, had, I had a lot of confusion with it but I did do a lot of research and kind of figured it out I also called Holly and talked to them about how to do it and um, just with this little it's a little trigger wire and basically that's why we kind of dueled up this so it's a low voltage switch from the switch pro uh, PCM and then this blue wire is a trigger source for the ignition switch so so we won't be able to turn on the starter or the fuel pumps or anything like that without it being from an ignition source being on. So a lot of stuff that you can program in this and it's kind of tedious whenever we do this. So we want to work on this, get this taken care of, and then show you when we're done. Went ahead and we'll tinker it outside here. And uh, all the lights are good to go from the ECU side. Got our computer plugged up. Put in a, a just a really basic tune. Updated all the, the fuel injectors and sensors and all that stuff. Went ahead and just got a battery kind of the battery charger hooked up to it because it's really cold. And uh, these batteries they're just really old. But besides that, went ahead and got all of our switches and everything programmed. black lip pink now the main reason why I pushed it out here everything is good to go with the motor it's primed we have oil pressure to the gauge sending unit um, everything is good to go there the last thing I need to do is I need to turn the fuel pumps on make sure there's no leaks set the fuel pressure um, at the regulator once we do that we should be able to fire this thing up and make some noise so hopefully We'll make some good noise but i don't know i'm really excited scared nervous we'll see what happens okay it, it had fuel pressure everywhere there was no leaks um it built up to like 59 psi at the regulator so if I have to change it, I will, but I don't think I'll have to do that because these are the older injectors, so they're, they don't have as much flow. Um, yeah. Now it's just time to see if this thing's going to start. I don't really know. We'll find out sooner than later. Um, I'm actually really nervous. I went ahead and put my earplugs in. Open headers. I know it's going to be super loud. But uh, let's... Uh, Let's 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 say a prayer and hope for the best.
Wow! It turned over! <laughs> yeah, baby! Oh my gosh. Hey, I don't know why it revs so loud. I mean, cold start, I don't really know, but... What? It finally turned over! Oh, it's gonna run. It's gonna run! Oh man, uh, the computer died, but oh my gosh, it turned over. I don't know, I might have to do some recalibrations on some things, but oh my goodness, I, my, my heart is racing, it's so exciting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just at a loss for words. I mean, this whole time it's been a lot of hard work, time, efforts, energy. And that was a huge check off of the box. So now that the motor is installed, working correctly, there was no bad booms, a lot of great noises. Um, I want to spend the rest of the day working on just the rest of the wiring and just getting all these wires ran and get the rest of the dash and all that figured out so the biggest thing on this video was pressing some buttons and making some noise and we did that so i'm going to stop the video here make sure you guys like subscribe and uh, i don't know what the future holds but we'll see you guys in the next one